Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Sure, we've already Let's had Let's all Universal. go to the lobby and get ourselves a snack. Oh! We've already had our copyright hit from eat. Universal. <laughs> So the popcorn can't be beat. Man, there's more to this song. I didn't know this. Sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat. Woo! Woo! Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so block B. Block, block two. <laughs> B. Block, block B. B. Two. Two. Block two, two B. B. Two B. Or not. Not to, to be. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> You're the one who ran this thing, man. <laughs> well, my wife called it uh, called it Block B. I called it Act Two, ah, and okay. we got very confused. Yeah. And so um, it's Block Act. Block Act <laughs> Two B. Two B. Okay. <laughs> so first up in Block B was the Fun Pack by Bombshell Media. This was this was the team from Athens, if if I'm not mistaken, that barely made it on time, and I'm so glad that they did. They were they were the closest to being the only team to turn in a film that was not going to be counted, but they just made it, and 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 I was glad because then the other teams didn't even turn anything in. Like the other late teams, they were just missing in action, so, so they made it in. And I was so glad because when I first started watching it. I thought, oh, this is a really creepy horror film. Like, you know, start of the guy comes in dragging the chainsaw. He's got that little white mask and just the beard and the, and the, the uh, you know, and he just comes in total leather face. And then all of a sudden it, the chainsaw kicks off and it's like the most hysterical thing. From then on out, it was just, I was laughing the entire time. And then at the end of the film, it stopped being funny. It started being s creepy and sad again. Yeah. yeah, it was really strange how that how how they did that. So it was, roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, <laughs> um, and a lot of good actors too. The actor who played the salesman on the TV really stood out to me. Yeah, and and, just, and they won they won uh, the award for best use of dialogue because yeah. the line was they never knew what hit them. And the guy says it like 20 times. They, go, yeah. they never knew what hit him. They never knew what hit him. And he has like this really <laughs> yeah. thick and like New York, New Jersey <laughs> accent. And he's got this tiny little mustache. Like, yeah. Are you tired of killing people with the same crap all the time? And then uh, it was just so out of nowhere. Yeah. It was just such a strange thing that it, it, it naturally had to win some awards. And one of them was the the WTF yeah, award yeah. <laughs> on behalf of, uh, behalf of the Horror Fest. And if you can get the Horror Fest to say WTF about your film, <laughs> then man, like, uh, just, yeah, such a funny, funny film, just a funny idea. And, and they just, they, they put a lot of work into one of the most ridiculous ideas. Yeah. And, and, they, and they look like they just had a lot of fun with it too. It's like, you can just tell it's like, like you had said earlier, it's like when teams just have fun, you can just tell. And oh, like that yeah. was just a blast to watch, and you know that they just had a blast making it. Yeah, it. and and may have just been you know everybody's ideas kind of like thrown in yeah. while they're doing it, kind of thing that yeah. just made it very. And then they were able to sort of just wrap it into this sort of twist where it was like all in all in the killer's head and, yeah. and, and it just makes you kind of go huh and then you start feeling creeped out and yeah. sad again and you feel it, bad for the serial killer yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, i just want to hug him <laughs> it's like oh i just want to so scratch his beard you can't, you can't kill anybody like, man just, just come kill me i'll let you kill me but the guy he had tied to the chair was such it was such a douche that, like, <laughs> yeah. like, you couldn't help but feel feel bad for the serial killer like the guy was laughing at him and yeah. he just felt like man you just you want him to hack that guy's oh yeah legs off. <laughs> and they even make a joke about it because you want him to just get the worst death possible and they make a joke like it was a news story or whatever and it's like the white-faced serial killer 
shot a guy. Yeah. Well, that doesn't seem very good. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And it was and it was a very strange kind of joke that was also a bit a bit surreal is that the the newscaster was it was, it was two guys named like Tom and Dick, but it was the same voice. Yeah. <laughs> and and the and the killer is just watching a TV that's just nothing just but static. static. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. just like he's staring at the static TV and he hears the same voice like, "Well, Tom, it looks like there's another killer." And and, and so he's starting to think this whole twisted, goofy commercial and everything that's happened. It's just sitting in this poor guy's yeah. mind. It was so funny. <laughs> one of one of my favorites. I, I laughed so hard at that one. So next up is Canned by Twin Pines Pitchers. Who? I don't. I Twin. Know. Yeah. It was something. I don't know. It was Twin like Pines? a. It was a sequel to um, some other. Con. Yeah. Uh, Copenhagen. Yeah. Copenhagen. That's yeah. Right, yeah. And that's why it was Copenhagen. Yeah. yeah. Copenhagen. <laughs> Do we even want to talk about this one? Well, you think it would be easy to get rid of a dead body, but I tell ya, those things are heavy! Okay, yeah, well the body's taken care of, but what'd you do with the knife? Well, we were in the kitchen. I stabbed him. And then I stabbed him again. What What did you use for the legs sticking out of the rug? <laughs> oh were they gosh. Were they golf clubs? No, because that's what I thought. I thought it was actually it was actually a skeleton. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, so he's going. Yeah, he's I guess going he's going to, going to go get the skeleton. I thought it was funny because it looked like it looked like nine irons or something. <laughs> yeah, like that. Just, there he is. Still got his clothes on too. Ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> It yeah. so resembles the actor. Oh, I know, like, right? It looks so just well. like Sean, doesn't he? He's yeah. always got a... I just love that it was it was one of those visual gags that just like you knew you weren't fooling anybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody yeah. everybody uh, felt the same way. Well, I mean, I don't know if you want to go over. There was a piece of feedback we did receive about oh, like... Yeah. I was hoping, you know, I don't know if the, the fake legs were... You know, supposed to be part of the joke, or if it was a mistake. It's like if it was I'm kind of hoping it was part of the joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, such great it, worked, it worked better as a joke than to be, you know, yeah. like genuine fake legs. So I, I mean, I assumed it was, it was, you know, part of the joke. Because then also, yeah, of the course guys, it was. Like, the guy, like the the rug, was like was like really tightly <laughs> yeah, round, so like tight. like that. And then when it opens, you just see this full man just come <laughs> out of it, and uh, and it was it was. Yeah, like just kind of like a visual gag that like didn't that like didn't really throw off the story, and no. it's, it's really surprising when you see something like that dropped into a situational comedy, yeah. and and it, and it still kind of holds well, up. Well, one of the things that uh, right before we started filming, I told everyone, I was like, you know, if our movie is like if here's reality, our movie is just like right here, you know, and just so <laughs> just keep that in mind, you know, <laughs> yeah. Is up, just. <laughs> <laughs> so, we tried to be just funny. Just slightly, and... yeah, slightly skewed. But, yeah. Um, no, that uh, that was one that was a, a tremendous uh, crowd pleaser. I just remember in the theater a lot of people laughing, and a lot of the uh, judges uh, who mentioned it, you know, talking about saying that that was one of their not an easy movie to to make uh, in such a well such a well way because it plays off of. This kind of uh, sort of suspense mm -hmm. in, in a sort of comedic way. It sort of reminded me of this sort of like macabre humor of like Alfred Hitchcock or something yeah. like that, where it was this real stressful problem, but then every step of the way there was always some there was always some extra element that was an obstacle. Yeah, uh, and yeah, that was it was a great film, and I think it. it Definitely, it was a well-deserved winner. So, awesome. thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, but we do gotta mention though. We gotta talk about the actresses. Yes. Like yes. Oh, yes. Stacey Littleton. Yeah. And, 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 her, and Bentley. The, the, yeah. Both of them did a tremendous job. And yeah. I think as far as uh, you know, Brenda's been in a number of films, and I think this was one of her best uh, like performances. Yeah. Like just kind of creating the. the you know, getting into that character was just, it was, it was It hysterical. came oddly easy to her. Yes. <laughs> it was very creepy how quickly she grasped that character and, yes. <laughs> yeah. and really loved the line, should we move the fingers and the teeth? <laughs> it was that, uh, hmm. 
I don't think she's as gentle of a person as she seems to be. Like, she might actually be kind of a, a violent individual. Yeah. And I don't know what Stacy thought when she when we asked if she was going to be in the movie because we texted her on Friday. Yeah. We had Sean text Sh- her on Friday. Sean uh, texted her and was like, "Hey, can it's like, what do you think about doing this?" And it's like, "Can you do a Minnesota, Minnesota accent? accent?" Yeah. And so she actually literally like. She went to the bathroom or something. Yeah, and recorded, recorded it. it really yeah. Instead of the file, we're like, that'll work. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but no, yeah, both of them. I mean, all of, the whole cast did amazing. But yeah. yeah, they they deserve. I mean, they had some tough competition. But I mean, they, and just a shout out to really Amy a- a- Akins too. It's like she was the. Um, Nelly. The Nelly, the nosy neighbor Nelly, who was talking about the yes, oil. Yes, it had some terrific dialogue yeah. that was <laughs> Just, that was under. If you go back and listen to like everything yeah. she's saying, it is some of the most hysterical <laughs> stuff. It came to her really creepy too because I wrote it and she actually had what I wrote or what we wrote and it, you know and then she added all this extra stuff to it. Kept, I was she like, kept going. What are you doing? <laughs> and we just kept rolling. And I felt so bad too because it's like we wrote. It's like wrote that huge long monologue yeah. but yeah. like my intention was like you won't even hear it it's just gonna be background noise to what's yeah. going on and so she memorized it that day right before we filmed she didn't even do the script or whatever i just was gonna have her read it and you know do yeah a BO. put it in underneath but she memorized yeah. it and so delivered that whole thing and i was just like with Man. extras with extras and i was just like <laughs> Man, i feel so bad <laughs> this is gonna be covered up no it's it was really tremendous and i, and I think just hearing the little snippets of it got a lot of laughs yeah. and, and was uh, it's great 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 film i don't know if it was a winning wedding uh, it was what it was <laughs> <laughs> so uh next one up is two wrongs by rock ridge The beginning of it was one of the best beginnings of a movie ever. Yes. <laughs> when it showed the cave, I was like, oh man, what, the guy what a location. Cave? This is awesome. And then just the T-Rex comes in. It's like, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is one of those, of like the guilt, I think it was a guilty pleasure film. Yes. To, 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 to laugh at it as much as we did when yeah. we were watching it. <laughs> Because every laugh was deliberately a cheap laugh. Yeah. Like, and they, and they, the, the filmmakers and, and uh, uh, Kevin Wines and, uh, and uh, Randall Mosier and uh, uh, like that. I mean, I think they would they would be the first to admit that they were just like they they were just going at it like as cheaply as possible because they wanted to make something that was cheap and stupid. Yeah. And and hilarious and. Uh, some, some of the, yeah, some of the best one-liners of the festival were, were in that film, oh, yeah. and, and kind of a, uh, uh, a, a throwback to Mel Brooks and the airplane yes. film. Yes, and, very and much that, so. That kind of uh, kind and the of soundtrack thing. really stood out to me too with the harmonica. Uh, it was like a yeah, it was, was a, a it was all yeah, it was all um, uh, a person. It, it was he was actually one of the the cast members, and he just did kind of like. As far as I know, it was just all improv, like harmonica that he did throughout the whole film, and it was just, uh, it was just a goofy film, and and everybody, everybody loves the inflatable T Rex who <laughs> then showed up at the uh, yes. the award ceremony. Yes, uh, very surprising. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was it was Randall Mosher's idea. He, I was in the back of the theater. And we were getting close to uh, we were getting close to the end of the second block, and he came up behind me, and he and he was whispering, "Say, he's like, hey, Jameson, uh, you know the the T Rex costume, right? I brought it. It's <laughs> like so you've brought it. It's in the car. Now, what do you think if I put it on? And I might not, but if I put it on and like come into the theater." I said, well, if you do, come in during the, the awards ceremony. And so we were in the back ta- talking about it. And he says, okay, I'll come in during the awards ceremony. And I'll just, and it's like, yeah, just come up and just storm the. You I know, imagine this is there. very like Cloak and Dagger, too. Both of you are in the shadows, except like of a beam of light just on it your It was. Like we were like, in the back of the theater just, like, <laughs> looking around, yeah. talking about this. And so, and. Uh, and he just happened to show up as we were given the uh, runner-up for best wardrobe, which went to the T-Rex. Yeah. And so then, I, and then I looked, I looked up, 
and I could see half of the T Rex like peeking around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started I started calling, and, and he came out, and uh, it was just one of the funniest things because I thought I thought it's like that's what I really wanted to do is just have a bunch of random animal costumes <laughs> come in, exactly. and and we just couldn't Your do it. Your vision came true. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what made it a fun festival, though. Like, and you're not the not to knock the previous years, but the award ceremony seemed to be more, I guess, just fun. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't it, it wasn't taken too seriously, you know? We just, yeah, we had I think fun it's with too it. easy to want to take it seriously. Yeah. And, I, and I think that if, if you take it seriously, then yeah, maybe you feel like you've gotten your ego stroked a little bit when you're a winner, but then you just feel like an, an extra loser. They're like, it's like a put down if, if there's this kind of this air of importance about the, about the awards. But the awards are supposed to be just a very lighthearted acknowledgement of how, how well everybody did. And, and so, I, and that was one of the big things about this festival is we wanted the awards to be a, a little more loose and a little bit more, you know, just, just funny, but also recognizing the hard work that everybody did and uh and that just that calls for an inflatable team right <laughs> <laughs> you have to have it makes everything better yeah he, he also i think was uh very claustrophobic in that he said that he was <laughs> and by the time he had made it to the front of the stage i could see that his covering was completely fogged up and he, was like, <laughs> he could not see where he was going so <laughs> next one is uh Triangle by Mancuso Hobbs. Mancuso, man, uh, Mancuso Hobbs. <laughs> man. This is a team from uh, um, uh, Johnson City, so mm. like they had a hard time uh, getting getting to the kickoff and then getting to the drop off on time because i think they're like an hour and a half away but um especially coming from johnson city to knoxville for the kickoff meeting you're gonna hit all sorts yeah, of traffic so they're hitting tons of traffic i think they got in there like right at like uh like 5 45 and so and i was like yeah but, you know that's fine but uh yeah very uh very interesting film uh and, and it was very the way it was shot was you know very uh kind of stark and very still they took they took time with the shots letting shots play out but in a way that was very controlled like it wasn't they didn't do it too much like so, sometimes you can let a shot go way too long and, and you don't know what you're doing they had a very good control over their uh, their piece um it was one of those uh, ones actually when it was playing that was one that i was just like oh no yeah. You know, I was like, mm. this one's mm. really good. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 and it was definitely like a top scoring uh, film. Yeah. And, um, uh, if, and if I'm not mistaken, this was their, the first time that they had done the 54. I, and I think they may have done one other film fest in, in Knoxville. But they mentioned that, well, since there's not a lot of stuff happening, you know, where they are, they didn't have a, a lot of output. And so I was really glad after seeing their film, I was like, man, I'm glad that, you know, they, you know, came all the way yeah. out here to, because what they did was tremendous. And uh, it had a great, you know, twist ending yeah. with, yes. with the, the dude being like, I killed your girlfriend. And then, you know, that that's a twist in of itself. But then yet yeah, another twist showing that he won't even admit to that. Yeah, and, and and that, that was, was awesome. Cause that was actually one of my favorite. The way it ended with him just walking away, and it just stays on the mirror. Yeah, and then you just hear it. Yeah, and it's like, oh, that's, and you that's feel, and you feel like, it's like, come on, man, own up, yeah. to it. man up to yeah. it. And you know, he was that close to it. And then, uh, and and just tremendous photography. Yes, uh, with uh, within uh, creating the different flashbacks, they had the, the this tremendous montage showing that and just the little hints about what's happening to the girlfriend and then to go back and cut back to the guy with his drunken night out and whatever and it's just the cutting is all over the place yeah. and it just they totally switched up the style uh, and it, it was just a tremendous way of, of taking a small moment in the kitchen and then expanding it in, in such a tremendous way. Like, yeah, it was one of fantastic. The, it was one of the standout ones. Yeah, um, very well crafted. And and they tackled drama though too. It's like and that's well to me anyways. That's a it's risky. 
you know, to you can easily die, you know, dovetail into camp. You know, it gets kind of yeah. cheesiness. Especially, whatever, especially you know? when it comes to like talking about somebody's like dead girlfriend or something like yeah. that. There's, there's, you run the risk very close of just of just being very, uh, you know, pretentious about it and being like, we're only taking this shocking idea and exploiting it. Yeah. Whereas I think they pulled back on that and and made something that was very you know it just wasn't wrapped up in being sentimental yeah it was you know played more on one character's guilt rather than the other character's uh, sadness and grief and uh, was, that was unexpected yeah, it was very well that was uh, like i said just it could have easily been sappy and it just wasn't at all yeah it was it, it was captivating it was shot well his production value was really great on that yeah, it was a fantastic film um let's see so, next great question. job Calvin and Hobbes. Yes. <laughs> They've gone dark, man. Calvin and Hobbes. It's like, Hobbes? <laughs> My girlfriend's dead. <laughs> Don't know. Hobbes, Hobbes just stops talking. Yeah. Calvin's like, <laughs> <laughs> that one day Calvin couldn't get anything out of Hobbes. <laughs> and he knew he had well, Let's go man. and build some snowmen. <laughs> His childhood was ruined and now Hobbes has <laughs> come alive. <laughs> I miss you, Hobbs. I miss you. <laughs> this the same day my girlfriend did. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I need you. <laughs> so uh, the next is The Bucket List by DDM Productions. Honestly, it's not something you expect. Having your whole life cut short, especially when you're just starting out on your journey. You think you have everything ahead of you until one day your whole world crumbles. This was the other. This was the other student film that, that filmed at that. Uh, yes, am, the Overlook. Yeah. Place, yeah, which was okay. Like we uh, we put the film. I almost was tempted to block the films right next to each other, just so those two films would annoy the, the other one. That the filmmaker would see it and be like, because you know that they, you know, if they were there in the theater and they they saw the other film. It went in their mind. I thought, well, if we keep them apart, no one's going to know that they use the same location. Yeah. And uh, um, this was a, yeah, this was kind of a just a charming little uh, film. Yeah. And uh, another one that could have been ultra sappy, but somehow like what wasn't that sappy. I, and I kind of liked that the characters had this very minimalist. Uh, uh, outlook on death you know that he was just like oh no i'm not worried about doing all these great things i yeah. just want to do the i just want to do the little things and uh they had a very good uh montage with really good yeah. music and musical soundtrack and really took advantage of the locations too like around knoxville and stuff like that yeah. not only the overlook but they shot at uh, the world's fair park as well and uh, i think yeah, yeah they went down the market yeah. square yeah. And, and you know they kind of just went all over and and just sort of Looks like that they, they just made a good day out of, of making this film. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, just, it was it was a charming. It was just a very charming film, and I think they they. they... What? Nothing. Was it a rat? Yeah. No. Was it? It was a mouse. Oh, was it? Yeah. I no, didn't see it. it. Uh, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't like mice. <laughs> so oh, when I just saw, oh, I just like. I didn't even see it. I looked, I looked up and I was like, what, did I say something bad? What did I say? <laughs> He's like, oh, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, I will say about the movie, though, you know your movie works when that, you know, it's a very sappy line. You know, we say it didn't go sappy, but at the very end, it's last bucket list. Just tell what, I don't know the character's name, but tell Sandra that I love her, or I love you, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And all the women in the audience went, oh, you know, like it, it worked. It worked. Yeah, you know, it, 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 uh, hit, it struck that chord with a lot yeah, of people. Alternatively, so I kind of wish that their ending would have been that she would have looked up and just says, oh, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Uh, no. Listen, you're, you're, you're a great friend. Yeah. And, um, and the credits should just roll over this. <laughs> <laughs> of him, of him. <laughs> He got his blanket. <laughs> like he had. He was dying of cancer, but it was the broken heart that got him first. <laughs> that would have been awesome. That that's how I would have ended it because I'm a very I'm a very cruel and insensitive person. So I'm glad. No, I'm glad that they didn't didn't do that. And, and uh, yeah, they got a good response. Yeah, it was a very. Really it was a very heartfelt uh, kind of uh, movie. Shadow Boss Red Six Films.
lost quite a bit of money and resources the past couple of months thanks to Harry Hudson. This was the noirish black and white film, right? It was the only black and white film, mm -hmm. which which I think was one of the team was most excited that they were the only black and white film. I think they, they asked when they turn it in, it's like, has anyone turned it in a black and white film? It's like, no, you guys are the only one. Yes. <laughs> we're the only black and white film. And and because it seems like every year there's at least like two or three black and white films. Yeah. So they were the only ones. Um, Another out of town team. I think they're from they're from Sevierville, uh, which isn't too far. No, you know, it's not as far as the other ones. But they're they're another team that they're kind of like newcomers in, as far as the Knoxville uh, uh, competitions, and one that just looked like they had a blast doing yeah. because it's it's really fun to film those kind of noir uh, 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 acting know, like, like the film. gangster. You know. Yeah, the over the top gangsters were awesome in that. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was, it was, I think I had, I think I enjoyed watching that film so much because I could tell how fun it was to make. I mean, maybe it wasn't fun, maybe they, they were like really, you know, <laughs> mean, mad, you know, just mean and grumpy about it, but it just, it just looks like everyone was having, having fun and, um, and you know, and then had a cool, you know, had a cool little twist with the, with the damsel in distress. Yes. Yes. Killing yeah. off like all the guys. Yeah. So it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, she sort of leaves the kiss of death on the guy. Like, I thought, I thought that they, you know, they really, uh, they took something that was, they took a lot of cliches and then sort of just were playing with it. So it wasn't just the typical, oh, here, here goes a, here goes a film noir movie. It was, it was something that they were just like, no, we're going to, we're going to, trying to make we're going to do all this all this neat stuff with it and um so yeah just really cool black and white film yeah disconnected by hold strong pro what is even happening i can't even believe this do you not even trust me it's not that what is going on then I, tell me what is it i, I can't even fine. believe this you win this time if you could know what i was feeling First thing that stood out to me with this movie was its title uh, card. I thought its title card was really well done. That's right, because yeah. you leaned over and said, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a very nice title card. I was like, man, man, they were, they, they the were. The one, one film that would have made, uh, that I think as far as like the cinematography, I think probably made a lot of people nervous too. Yeah. Uh, it had some really great shots. Uh, yeah, that, so the yeah, cinematography stood out right there. And the acting was really well done in that one too, I, I remember thinking. It was yeah, and it, it was kind of a, a, a you know story-wise, uh, it was one of the films you weren't really sure which way it was it was going to go. Uh, so, and I and I'm to this point, I'm not entirely sure what the what the title "Disconnected" really meant. For one thing, it it, it showed the guy at the beginning of the film being disconnected because he was in the. He was playing video games, and then he was like going through Tinder, mm. and then he is at the bar and like totally shuns the waitress who was yeah. like, who was just like, "Hey, you're usual here." And he's like, "Huh, huh," because he's on his phone, like, and just like practically puts his hand in her face, uh, and so it's like, okay, well now he's disconnected. And then the next thing is like when they go out on a date, they're playing disc golf. And now they're disc. Connected. Oh. So I, I don't know if that was the insert point of rim it. shot <laughs> here. <laughs> I don't know if that was the point of the title, but like it could go both ways. At first, he's dis if, if I was the filmmaker and I didn't mean it that way, <laughs> I would totally be like credit for that. Yes, that's exactly. You got it. There's disc connected. <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff about disc golf in it. So <laughs> I was looking for the I was looking for the connection there. It was, I like in the disc golf, they didn't let them make all their shots, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, they showed them missing. I think maybe they deliberately edited it. There's, like, make the guy... <laughs> make, <laughs> make maybe they were better, and the guy was jealous. It was like, oh, I'm going to show all their lousy shots. And I don't know how hard it is to play disc golf, because I've pain. never played. It's I mean, I've never pain. played. Yeah. It's pain. Yeah. But, yeah, some really cool stuff with the, uh, with the motorcycle yes. uh, yeah. uh, driving shots. And uh, just... Uh, Kind of, I think that stood out. I think that probably made a lot of people nervous when their competitors watched. It was really sweet, just a sweet story. 
You know, yeah. the classic boy meets girl situation. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't go dark. No, right? yeah. <laughs> you keep expecting it. It's like you're just so just after jaded. Seeing, just after, after seeing all the other films, because this was a very dark year, there's a lot of death, a lot of girlfriends <laughs> dying. You just, you see them on the motorcycle and, and you think, it's like, is this going to end bad? And, and fortunately for the two characters, it didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank goodness it wasn't one of us directing that film. Yeah, yeah, he would have killed her. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Like. Raccoon runs out in front of the motorcycle. <laughs> Off the cliff. <laughs> no! And he, and, he, and, he, and, and he breaks a disc. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, your disc is, I'm sorry, it's broken. And it's like, well, your girlfriend, she's dead. And it's like, but we are so connected. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Oh, now you're really connected because we had to sew her head onto your body. <laughs> uh, I better call her her parents. It's like, oh, that phone line's been disconnected. <laughs> I hope they appreciate all these uh, all these plot twists. <laughs> that they, feel free to use any of these ideas. Take if, it and run with it. Just, if you want to make a sequel, just take <laughs> these ideas and just make disconnected, disconnected to, to on hold. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. It's our gift to you for your, for uh, giving us that gift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is Oak Ridge by Unwarranted. Local college student Jeremy Scott has a very niche talent. Jeremy's record for solving a Rubik's Cube is under five seconds. This one I thought really had really great production value. It was. This was a student. This was a student film. Yeah, it looked and, fantastic. And, and it was. Uh, and, and I think the story behind it was that they had very limited resources, except for their uh, um, campus broadcast studio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so that's where that wonderful set comes from. I wasn't sure where it was. Yeah, Did they get a news station? Yeah. It was. It was. A, a, it was a campus uh, broadcast class at UT, as far, as far as I know. And so they, I think they took that and just says, like, look, this is probably the best resource we have. Let's exploit it for all, it, you know, all it's got. And so they created this very unique and interesting uh, film. It was, a, it was a neat approach that they didn't. They weren't trying to make a film that looked like a film. Yeah. They said, let's, let's make it look like a, a news story. You know, what's the worst possible thing that can happen uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it was, during a news broadcast? It was kind of crazy, though, because it starts off with the Rubik's Cube story. And you're like, Where, where's this going? You know, yeah. it's a Rubik's Cube story. And then it goes into it. And you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, and it, and it was just, there was so very little revealed. But, like, I think enough just knowing the title Oak Ridge, everybody in the area yeah. is thinking, oh, that could be anything. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's, but it's whatever it is, it's coming to kill us all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, yeah, had some really great moments. I think the guy in, in the back of the news van yeah. just kind of slowly getting uh, sort of detached from, yeah. from having to be the news broadcaster and, and you know, just... It gave the whole thing this very just creepy, unsettling vibe. I, was without... really, I remember thinking, actually, as it was going, I was like, man, I really hope this goes into full, just uh, even though it was a giant monster, what I think it was. Uh, it's like with the newscaster, the news anchor specifically, I was like, man, I really just, at one point we need to see him in full, just beginning of Dawn of the Dead anchor, you know, the <laughs> sleeves rolled up, tie undone, just... <laughs> Okay. Well, Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why am I reading this crap? <laughs> it's, yeah, there was a lot. I think there was a lot that was sort of withheld from it, but then you know added to the mystery and and, uh, the, and it was even going through the film. I was going through trying to get a glimpse of like whatever that monster was that was like coming. Yeah, out. yeah. And I said, I was like, was that Godzilla? Like, what is it? And you, you still can't make it out. But yeah. you're just thinking. Ooh, that's yeah, that's that's, un, that's unnerving. Yeah, just the hints of it. It's like it's to make sure your audience goes to see it. You know, as little as they did, just as quick as it was. But you still, everyone goes like, there was something. Yeah. You know, everyone and saw it. Yeah, and, and everyone in the audience kind of got really still yeah. at that point. You yeah. Know? And, it, it, and it wasn't a lot, but it was. It was like it was just enough for the film fest to kind of like, what an interesting idea. Yeah. So and then when the, the cop. 
walked by, you know, yeah. and it was like another really good moment where it just built built the tension of it. Yeah. It's like, oh, what's going on? Yeah. Great looking cop, too. It looked like a legit cop. <laughs> I, th I think it was. They just probably pulled up at a traffic stop and just waited for him to come. <laughs> if we sit here He's and hold up traffic walk. long enough, <laughs> yeah. someone's like, bound to hey, come. Hey, you need to move on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just go with it. Just go, just go with it. Production value. <laughs> uh, next one is My Roommate the Murderer by mm. Beard. Uh, my name is Ryan. Uh, Ryan Dalen. I don't know if you don't know all that. But uh, I don't know. I don't think I really do anything noteworthy, I guess. Uh, my name is Dan Casey, and I live with the murderer. I have to apologize to this team because I kept calling them bread. <laughs> part of my like dyslexia, for some reason, bread made more sense to me as a team name than beard. I don't know, but but then I saw the guy with the beard that like really looked like Joaquin Phoenix. Yes, and, yes, he did. And <laughs> just uh, like it. now, I understand why they called themselves Beard. Uh, they got Joaquin in this man. A man. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really kind of uh, just off the wall sort of yeah. silly movie. Like I thought it was funny. beautifully acted and just so funny like throughout. Just every line I think was like so hilarious. It was, re yeah, and it's very hard to do a, a mockumentary, but I think to do it in that way and to make it just very bizarre, you know, it's very unexpected. Like none of these guys seem like murderers you know they didn't they didn't go with a joke of having you know just want to say well this is my roommate and then it cuts back and it's Jason Voorhees you know just yeah. you know it was the whole time everyone was just really relaxed and then you see the bathroom door open and it's just covered in blood yeah. and, and the guy's just like the guy just seems like mildly annoyed he doesn't even seem mad come on guy psychotic he's just like dude what why are you why are you, why are you, why are you still I'm filming cool. I, don't, I don't get it like and then the secret spot too. Fallen's like, I told you not to follow me in the secret spot. It's just the and it's dumpster. just a dumpster. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like the, the the title card. It's like Sam, next victim. Yeah. Sam, whatever, whatever, whatever it said after he was dead. Like Sam, latest victim. <laughs> <laughs> and also his roommate though. It's like, I mean, seriously, you know, it's like I wouldn't kill his like, roommate. Not a murder. Possibly. Possibly a murder. Definitely, like, a definitely a murder. Definitely a murder. It's like, oh, it's so funny. It's like I feel bad when you know he like kills attractive people because it's like, <laughs> yeah. it, it was. Yeah, I'd love to know like you know if this entire film was just improv from you know beginning to end or if they were exact, or if they actually had that kind of outline. Well, I noticed in their credits, it seemed like the act the director was one of the actors in it. Or they mm -hmm. were both director. I don't know if it was co-director or not, but it seemed like it was a very small group of five people in the whole credits. I feel like yeah, it was just like a couple of buddies uh, yeah. and, having fun and, making a movie. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. That was a and they won the award. Uh, that's right. Uh, William from the uh, horror fest uh, picked that that's out. That's right. As, yes, as, as his favorite horror film. And that gets premiered. Doesn't it play at the Knoxville Horror Fest? Or? I, think I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, think it, I think I think it'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. See it again there. <laughs> So the next is The Giving Towel, and just says J is the production. J is the name of their team. Yeah, That was it. It's just the letter J. I thought that they just didn't complete the registration <laughs> or something. It was but no, it was, it was just J. Once there was a towel, and she loved a little boy. The boy used the towel to play hide-and-go-seek and build forts and wear as a cape. And when the boy was tired, he would sleep on the towel. And the boy loved the towel. And this was this was uh, this one kind of made us nervous when we started to watch it. And I think everybody watching it was like, "Where is this going?" Because is this going? So well, you gave a warning before the second block of films is like, "Okay, so everything's a PG-13 movie. Um, some go a little bit off the wall here, but nothing up to this moment seemed too." Weird. They'd be like, oh, yeah, nothing doesn't question the PG-13 movie. It's like this one pushes it. This, this block pushes. That's it. the one that you're kind of worried, like, what, you know, where's this gonna go? And yeah. When it comes to a guy wearing a, a loin cloth and that. What and festival was it at? It was like some that festival. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, I can't remember. He, or he wanted to wear wear a. He needed a loin cloth for Burning Man. Yeah, yes, Burning that's Man. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> burning Man. And. Uh, and I don't know how many people picked up on on the fact that this was a parody of uh, the Giving Tree. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, there was uh, there was some of the judges. I think they 
they were they were confused by that. I thought, no, this was it was a direct parody from, yeah. from the Giving Tree, and, and they even cited a Shel Silverstein in their credits as, as the inspiration for it. that? And I, and I yeah, and I watched it and like immediately realized, oh, this is the the Giving Tree. It's why it's the Giving Towel. And what a bizarre thing to do because towel was their was their prop, and and they were just like, well, let's make the whole film about the towel, and let's give the towel a personality and a character <laughs> and I thought oh, that that alone is funny but then it just kept getting a little, a little odder a little weirder yeah. and weirder and, going. And, and, well, uh, you know, I love the snickers in the audience though the moment it first started just it's like it's like <laughs> just come into come me boy. boy oh yeah that's come boy <laughs> and everyone just was like you just hear the snickering <laughs> I was like oh <laughs> it was one of those ones that like people who had their minds in the gutter were yes. definitely following this film very well because yeah. it, I know someone really close to me was laughing really, really loud yeah. at all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was enjoying it. He'll remain nameless though. You, you know, know who, who you are. are. Ah, Jinx, knock on wood, you owe me a Coke. <laughs> Can't talk till you give me a Coke. So, Jameson, now that's just yeah. you and I. Okay. Well, I was about to tell a really hard story. Go get the story. Coke! Yeah, this movie really, like, it got, it got me all emotional. Because it had the shots of the little boy playing with the towel and the overalls at his, like, playground. And, like, it had been, like, I don't know, like, we were into it, like, three hours by then. And, uh... Luke, my little two-year-old or whatever, reminded me of my two-year-old, and I was like, yeah. mm, I want to go, I want to play with my kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it, it had that, yeah, it had that really sweet moment, and you thought, well, this is starting off as a very sweet film, and then it just slowly <laughs> stopped getting sweet. I don't know started. if it was ever really sweet when the first line was like, come, boy. Come, boy. It's like, oh, no. It's like, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Well, and then they and they followed that up with a, a scene of, of him with the girl in the bedroom. Yeah. And this yeah. is the, this is when we really started to get nervous. Is that his hand reaches down and grabs the towel yeah. and pulls it up into the bed with them, and they were like, "Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> the towel that keeps on giving." Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh man. So uh, the next one is "Opportunity Knocks" by the French Broad. 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 <laughs> Y'all wake up. Hey. Wake up. Candy. Wake up. Y'all wake up. I got us a gig. Yeah. Yeah, I met this Russian lady at the bar last night, and she's going to pay for us to make a commercial for Beaver's renovation. And then all we got to do is get her house painted before her in-laws get here late tomorrow night. Okay? okay. Candy, wake up. Broad. I can't. This I can't one. Broad. This, this was the other one that, this, this is the other one that made us very nervous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I was watching and I was wondering, it's like, <laughs> that, that, where, does, where is the line drawn? That frying pan started to slip. <laughs> I had to watch that scene very carefully, <laughs> looking for anything. He had to anything, zoom in a little anything. bit. I did. I had is to, there any I had slippage? to sure because I'm like, okay, I'm watching on my computer and it looks fine. When it's 60 feet big, are we going to see anything, you know, dangling out? Like, you know, like I had to make sure that there was, there was nothing, you know, that, you know, playing groundhog there. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we only saw the shadow, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, six more weeks to the fifty. <laughs> so we, so that and that one also got a huge response yes, yes. from from the audience and from uh, from the judges. Yeah. Knoxville like, is a bunch of sick puppies. I'm sure. Yeah, but I think I think by that point, like it, people were ready for for that. Yeah. Another one you could not kick off the festival with. Like I knew that from the beginning. The, the, yeah, they took like, a, they cut a couple of awards. Yeah, it was uh, honestly. Oh yeah. Well, and the, and the thing is, like the 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 team uh, that did this, you know, they were they're very they're the complete opposite of those characters you saw on the screen. So, so like the the acting seemed almost too real. Yeah. I, think they, I think the reason that they they managed to, to get a nod for the acting is because people understood that those extreme characters were not actually them, yeah. Yeah. that they were not actually that like these, and, and uh, yeah, like that one got a huge response from people. That, Remember, they were there turning it in uh, shortly after we turned ours in, because we were just hanging out, because we really had nothing to do that day. But uh, we turned ours in, and they came, and they were actually, I think, trying to get it exported. I, was that they were? Yeah, they had it. They had it on a laptop, and and they were trying to export it out of out of iMovie, and yeah. they were having trouble with it. 
So one of the stipulations was like, well, we have to make sure you have a film to turn in. And so we uh, we, we sat down and with their laptop and, and they played through it. And, and that's when I was, that's one of the first films I watched because of that. And I was like, Oh man, <laughs> is this going where? Is this, where is this gonna go? And uh, but I had to make sure that they had their film, and then they managed to they managed to get it exported. So then we got it onto a, a thumb drive, and it was like, all right, we got we got your film. But there was a few teams that that had to do that the same. And we told them it's like, look, if you can't get it exported on a thumb drive bring your laptop and let it render out while you're doing it like you know you can come here and, and yeah. export your film and and we're, i'm glad that one made it in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm really glad it did um just because it was it was very of course uh got the uh out of left field award which yes. was like keith was watching the uh keith mcdaniels of the knoxville uh, uh film festival what? was watching these I don't know, some some film festival, I don't know. and um, he thought, but I guess he was just busting a gut over this one. Uh, probably must have been like his favorite film. <laughs> He's watching it in his podcast studio, just laughing hysterically. <laughs> So that was that was opportunity. So it'll actually be shown at uh, the Knoxville. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. It, it gets an it gets a free screening yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I I really want to be I really want to be at that screening because I want to see what that audience thinks. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one was Emerald by Nexus Films. This one was really, uh, it was really well done in my opinion. It was, it was, it it was very, very well done. It had the heart uh, to it, you know, and it mm -hmm. didn't go into sappiness. It was very, it was very, I loved the pacing of that film. Yes. It was very, it was very slow and didn't, did not really play too much on story as, as much as it did the character, these individual characters, and which I thought was, was, interesting because usually if a film doesn't have much story it still doesn't have much of anything else yeah. this had um, not so much of a plot but just focused on these individual characters and, and their situation so there was a lot of mystery to it but it, but a lot of intrigue yeah. and a lot of interest because you're wondering it's like it's it's really cool it's like looking well, my interpretation of it is you're seeing all these characters reaction to this loss in their lives you know right? yeah and it just it's really cool the way they did it because they never spell that out they never say this is what happened or anything yeah. like that yeah there's a lot a lot th a lot of things that just seemed like it was better when, when it was unspoken yeah um but then the way that they went into each of these characters you know it's starting off with the girl and and you're, you're seeing how she's uh you know, viewing the world and the situation, and then the dad and the stress that he's under, and then the int very interesting part going, you know, to wherever the brother yeah. was, who seemed like he was completely lost and separated from the rest of the group, and um, very dramatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, material there. Um, and I believe that the, they were the ones who got the runner-up for. Um, the awareness award, yes, just because yeah. it, it really showed um, uh, sort of a troubling, you know, a troubling circumstance, and also there was no uh, there was no resolve to their trouble as well, yeah. yeah, which is kind of a gloomy, sort of depressing way to end it, yeah, but also a very real ending, you know, yeah. that they they at least had some comfort, you know, you see the mother figure come in yeah. comforting them. But they still have they still have problems that they got to deal and with. And the little girl I thought was very captivating throughout as well. It's like I don't mm -hmm. think she said anything until the very like last bit of it. I don't remember. Yeah, speaking, I, I think it was so. just the last. Yeah, I think it was just the last line. And I thought uh, she just was like throughout just the stoicness of it that she had. It was uh, very well done. It was very well shot too. I thought. And the yeah. director of it, he was the one that won the up and coming award for the Knoxville the seven, seven day. day. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, Crockett. Crockett? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep. So, really good. so he's definitely uh, talented. Very talented filmmaker, and he's, he's a pioneer. He's up and coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
So uh, next is uh, thick as thieves. Thick as thieves. Far, far films. Uh, far films. No far films. Now, thick as thieves. They had a drone film. shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty good. <laughs> nah. it, was, it was. It's a bit overrated. <laughs> I'm kidding, young Eddie. Because <laughs> oh. it's sweating a little bit now. Huh? I call oh you man. Mash. I mean, in all honesty, like you got the one thing. One thing you did change about the 54 this year was that you can only vote for one audience favorite. And yeah. years past, there's like two or three, I don't remember. And so, so last, last year, year it was split up between blocks. That's so right. There, there was, yes. a, there yes. was a audience favorite in the first block and audience uh, favorite in the second That's block. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and I believe like both your film and, uh, and Far Film uh, was in the second block. So even if we did that, the, the audience could only pick one or the other. So right. well, it, you just never stood a chance. Well, we, <laughs> we, I mean, in all honesty, <laughs> I voted, I, you did as well. We, yeah. we, I could not in good conscience vote for my own film. Yeah, we both voted for with that. Film. It was, it was a tremendously entertaining film. Absolutely. It, it was, I mean, it, you, you really can't, you really can't not say that. No. It was just a really well crafted film. Yes. Straight through. And, and, and the thing is, of it too is that they they really kind of took almost a sketch comedy approach like I felt but did it in a way that was still very very strong yeah mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with not not just the writing and the directing but the they had a terrific cast yeah. who really brought the comedy and that's the one part of it is that the, it's really hard to get you know that kind of comedy unless you've got the right guys yeah behind and in front of the camera uh you know it, it was very it would have been very easy to mess that film up and, and they did it i mean just it was uh, yeah everything about that movie it's like there's just no weak spot in it at all and, no I it's mean, very very tight yes uh, structured and uh, uh and i and i will say this and i and, and i i said this at the festival and and eddie tried to shut me down and say it wasn't so but the shot where the car pulls up and then it's the and it's that little kid that's in it. Yeah. First of all, that's the I think to me that was the funniest oh, yeah. moment in the movie. Yeah. It was like get in, Daddy, yeah, get that was in. Awesome. Was the funniest part. But I, and then I was so curious, how did they do that? Because you know, I figured they must have just let that kid drive up. But so, but I was like, how you know, how did they do the the special effects of that? And so I watched it frame by frame, and it's just a straight cut at the right moment. But you see a full-grown man pull up in that car, and then it changes to that little kid. Yeah. And then the, the dad gets in, and then right as they're about to take off, it cuts back to that full-grown man driving. But you can't see it when you watch the film. And, and so he, he denies that it's there, but I, I encourage anybody when it's posted, I guess it's posted on YouTube. Yeah. Right? Go back and see if you could catch that. I don't know who it is in the driver's seat. But they're there. You've been they're called there. out, Eddie, for your they're nonsense. There. Now, the, the, the variety of that movie is what was awesome about it. It's like, you know, I mean, they, they had just very few locations in it. But they kept it interesting with the lighting changes. Just their lighting setups alone, it was like... It was very... It was, it was awesome. very... Yeah, they were very... Uh, just... Uh, um, use their resources very well yeah. the, you know i think that the uh, uh the way they went about it was they were very careful with it yeah. and i think we're able to maximize their production value because of just careful planning mm -hmm. and knowing how to how to light these different scenes because each each scene that was shown had its own particular vibe yeah. um and i think it was also interesting that even though that this was just kind of this funny comedy um, that it was pointed out by some of the judges that they thought it worked deeper than just kind of you know funny laughs the, it had this sort of satire about uh, about people's perception of 
being a criminal. The fact that, you know, at the end it reveals that they were busted for whatever petty crime that they were in the yeah. jail. Yeah, in their mind, they're just, they've just got this clear idea of how easy it is to be a cool criminal and, and of course, have no idea how, <laughs> how it actually works. The hacker so, stuff was amazing. The ha oh, yeah, the hacking stuff and then the use of the VHS tape was, is, was hysterical. That was one of my favorite jokes when it's like, why beat people with technology? And then it's just literally him. Hitting a guy over the head with a yeah, laptop. Yeah, with a laptop. Like, oh, and, then it, and then, you know, he used a CD throwing star. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, and, and clearly had no idea what any of the technology yeah. was. He made a, made a, a, com, a comment about having to do a C-section on the main frame. Yeah, yeah, that was great. So, so it, it played very, it was a very funny parody on all these sort of like crime, all these like crime heist yeah. films like of the 90s. and early 2000s. It was very excellently done. Just, just everything just about it was perfect. Wonderfully crafted yeah. film. Very tight and won a lot of awards. That, yeah. Know, awesomely. Well yeah. deserved. More. Deserved more. <laughs> yeah. It's great, great, great film, guys. Please, please make more. Yeah, seriously. Like, no, don't make more because we can't win anymore. Leave that like down below for us now, Eddie. Share it. <laughs> share it. Hit the share button. Hit the share now that button. that's over with. Copy and paste the link in <laughs> your right. status, please. Before my phone dies, actually, I need to get a selfie with all of these. Oh. Yeah. Wait for like film. A, I'm like on a film making thing. Cool. <laughs> Looks so intense. Curves ahead. It's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next one is Heartfelt. We are alive. Hello? Hey, sweetie. How was your day? Fine. Did you do anything exciting? No. The puppet film. Yes. <laughs> I was so happy that there was a puppet film in it. Like, and, and, and here was the thing. When I was watching it and I saw the puppet, I was like, I was immediately touched, but I was rejoicing. I was like, yes, someone put a puppet in their film. Because I felt like that was a message just to me. I, I, I didn't think anyone cared that much uh, about all the effort I did with my puppets. You know, the, the, nobody wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, yes. uh, but then the film, like, it, it was very just funny and had this very quirky style. And then... Uh, you know, just completely did a 180 and became, was very deep and, 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 a, and a very, very poignant film. And so it it wasn't a joke like how it seemed to start off as. Um, I thought it was just incredible uh, direction on, on that film's part. And, and the acting was, 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 was tremendous. Absolutely beautiful. Really took me by surprise. I think it took a lot of people by surprise. Yeah. Uh, and He won uh, Best Actor, I believe. Best Actor yes. is uh, Neil Irvin. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a very gifted actor. And, and, uh, and now, uh, with this film, and he did a film last year, um, I believe it was a, a Daddy was a time cop. Oh, really? But that's oh, right. Yeah, I remember yeah, that weird, yeah. quirky kind of yeah. film that that took all these elements that you know seemed like they could be silly, but turned it into something really deep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. Neil must be reaching into some really dark places inside, <laughs> like to pull this stuff out in. Um, and yeah, that is not an easy thing to pull off uh, for to what he did with this playing this little puppet character and then playing this character, you know, and, and that very emotional scene at the end yeah. where he's talking to himself. To do that and have it not be laughable, mm -hmm. but to also have it be tremendously touching was just, I was just like, wow. So. Yeah, winning the audience like that over something that could be easily, like you said, just, you know, comical. It's like yeah. it wasn't, you know, it didn't ever go that way. It was just like... Man, yeah. he's got it. Yeah, he's got yeah. all of us now, captivated by him and this puppet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and watch and watching it, uh, watching it with the audience and hearing the giggles and the chuckles just get quiet and quiet, and then and then all of a sudden everyone is just on the edge of their seat, you know, pulling for this guy yeah. on the and uh, it was it was just it was just beautifully done, uh, just just as far as the. the 
tech, you know, just the direction and the and the writing and the acting, just just beautifully done. Yeah, that's awesome. And it had a puppet in it, so I had to get the puppet award. <laughs> yeah. Now, did the puppet award come? Was there always a thought of doing a puppet award? Or was it when you saw it, you're like, I had to do a puppet award now? We said, we said that, uh, I think I did a video, I think it was in the video where we announced that there were no genres this year. And, and, and the puppet was, was saying, you know, you could do a puppet movie, you could do a Western right, movie, yeah. you could yeah. do a Western movie with puppets. You know, like kept insisting yeah. somebody yeah. do a puppet was the joke. Um, so then we decided, you know what, if somebody actually does, it's like, if somebody actually does a puppet film then I will give them a puppet award and but I was not expecting anyone to actually do it and then the second I saw that not only was there a puppet but then it started becoming about the puppet and, and building the puppet and uh, there was a fantastic shot where it was a close-up of the book it was like how to make friends and it pushes in and it says make friends oh, and then the next thing is him actually yeah. making a friend yeah, that's awesome thought, that's just that was just a genius yeah. moment so it, it wasn't just a toss out yeah. oh here's a random puppet because it'd be funny yeah. so yeah i think it deserved a puppet award yeah. for sure uh, <laughs> the other question i have is now i feel like he said one of the books said by jameson stallsworth or something like that what he said was that there was a shot that got omitted from the film okay i didn't hear that part um, okay yeah pulls out this book that was like how to make puppets and apparently there was a shot where at the bottom it was going to say by jameson stallsworth as a, as a as a joke but then it got cut out and then then i felt then i felt bad <laughs> Man, that would have been. I would have been. I would have felt. I, would have, I was. I was honored for for that little bit of, of a tidbit, though. You know, I thought that was. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, but, awesome. but a great film, just on its own. Yeah, oh, very much. Puppet so. or not. Next movie is The Pink Ribbon by Boston. By Boston. Boston. Yes, Boston. the musical group came all the way to Knoxville to participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, and they were great sports. Yeah, about it too. They gave that secret show, you know. Yeah. Well, to you know, to us and. It's a really good time. Yeah, a lot of people missed out. Yeah, yeah it's too bad. Missed out on Boston. Hey, babe. Just calling to check in. I just got out of class. Hope work was good, or at least better than yesterday. But the, but the film they didn't miss out on. No, no, the film. No, they did a tremendous nice. film. Yeah. Also, a, also a student film, uh, yeah. and they actually won uh, the. Uh, uh, award for uh, best student film, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very interesting and, and just very well done. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think the device of using using voicemails, old voicemails, and going through. Of course, you don't realize that they're old voicemails till the end. Yeah. Um, and I think it was very well done, not just on the director's part, but the the actress who you never see her speak but you're just hearing her voice yeah. mm -hmm. and just within those missed calls conveys the entire relationship i thought was like wow that was that was really you could just hear it with each little message you know you could tell what was going on great way lives. to tell the story too the story is like that's it's easy to tell that same story in a very cliche way but they took it and they made it very Almost very real too, I think, because you know, oh, yeah. it's like with voicemails. That's something I think you know people really do that. You know, it's like yeah. you know, somebody dies, a family member. You save, you save it, yeah. yeah. And, then, so, and then, so that, yeah, that coming at the end, and you know, he's at the grave, just listening to all the, all the missed calls was just like, ooh, you know, that really, that really stings. It wasn't, it wasn't so much just like, maybe you could assume that this guy wasn't there for her. Is the fact that that's what he's thinking. He's listening to all the calls that, that he, you know, you know, just let go the voicemail and thinking, man, you know, it's, it's tormenting, uh, and just, uh, just tremendous, tremendous film. Uh, just great uh, cinematography, great use of uh, montage. And was there a proper ribbon, or was that no? Yeah, yeah, the prop yeah, was thought, a, was a so. ribbon, and I think to use to use it in a way they really used it. Uh, in, in a very effective way that having that element represent the, the individual, represent the character, and, and to show that, you know, that is pretty much 
all that's left of her, uh, and, and it's just, you know, it's very startling. Yeah. And uh, uh, they did a they did a great job. Yeah, it's very well done. Um, a sad one to end the end the festival. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was it was that was kind of a that was kind of a yeah. I think maybe like the audience would have appreciated like a more of a pick me up film. Yeah. That one that one that one after you're done watching that one kind of sits with you yeah. a little bit, and uh, which is uh, only goes to tell you know just the effectiveness of, of the of the director the, the filmmakers of just how well that one sticks with you. Yeah. And that, that was one of the films that kind of hung around with me, just watching all of them. I, I, I kept going back and thinking about that one. And, um, and, and, and also just very surprising with this one that it was a student film. Um, that, uh, so I don't know, you know, they seemed very experienced, uh, like very experienced filmmakers and that they knew exactly how they wanted to tell the yeah. story. Um, they hit it out of the park, I thought. Absolutely. Yes. Great film. It was awesome. Well, we've gone through all the films, so that's awesome. So there's a lot of yeah. great films throughout the festival, a lot of yeah. talented filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Two thoughts looking overall at the film festival is a lot of our student films. It's like, I worry for the emotional state of our college students. A lot of, oh, yeah. A lot of dead girlfriends, a lot of them. <laughs> very dark. Very, I think, and I think part of that was getting rid of the genres this year. Yeah. Uh, just sort of so everybody just says, oh, well, I can talk about somebody dying and, yeah. and, or show some blood and, and you know, gore. And everyone, so, yeah, it, it's kind of unnerving to think that everyone's got that dark side. And yeah, we like saw death, I think, every facet of death that there is. We saw in a comedic way, a quirky way, a dark way, <laughs> a depressing way, a really disturbing way. I think it, we, death was covered. This was, well. the, this was the bloodiest 54, yeah. I, I'm sure. Yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of blood, but it was definitely the, the bloodiest. Yeah. So <laughs> it was bloodier than the seven days. Yeah. Uh, so. And uh, the second thing that came to my attention, and it took me like halfway through the festival, was like, I really worry about how s prevalent smoking has become amongst <laughs> people. That was something I noticed too, because. Well, it clicked with me halfway through. That's the curveball. Yeah. Everyone's smoking for the curveball. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. So, and I don't know how many were just who were just already smokers, or if people just volunteered. Like, yeah, yeah I will inhale all the carcinogens uh, for the sake of uh, of uh, the curveball that that. Uh, uh, it wasn't my, that wasn't my idea for the curveball. That was uh, that was my wife's idea, Tiffy's idea. She says, "Oh, we should do some smoke and fog." And, and I said, well, you can get a lot of cigarette smokers in there. And she said, I don't care. And, and, uh, yeah, so then I realized cool. that. cool. Joe Camel smokes. Yeah. He looks yeah, awesome. He's a cool guy. He's got that he's Ferrari, the, the Corvette, you know, yeah, convertible. Yeah, my hero. He's everybody's hero. Seriously, he's, he's awesome. American hero. Yes, he is. Getting all the ladies. So, yeah. So smoke up. Yeah. That's basically Kids. what I'm saying. <laughs> All, all the best films, I think, have everybody smoking them. Absolutely. Casablanca? Yeah. Hmm? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> Citizen Kane? Yeah. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of film noir. Wizard of Oz? And interestingly enough, though, the film noir film uh, by Red Six, I don't think anyone was actually smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I don't there think so. There was a little bit of smoke, there's a little bit of like, smoke that like, came in like, from the side. That's right. Yeah. Like that. yeah. But, yeah. but there was no, nobody had a cigarette. Nobody actually no one was smoking. Smoked, so. so. <laughs> it was, it was, they really cleaned up film noir in a way. So they're, they're taking back that reputation. Yeah. <laughs> I wondered how many people were getting the nicotine cravings of watching these films. Yeah. <laughs> no. One audience member is like, I'm, I'm giving it up, Marie. I'm giving it up. Tonight's the night. I'm not smoking anymore. For the sake of the festival, I want to sit there and enjoy films. And, and then just... Mm, that looks. Mm. <laughs> Give me the cigarettes, Marie! <laughs> no, Bob, <laughs> stop. So, I wanted to ask. Yeah. So, 29 films. Is there one that stood out most to you or surprised you the most after you watched it? Like, oh, I really enjoyed that film. Canned. Mm. Well, <laughs> I think, well, I think, I think Canned was, uh, it, it was, 
met my expectations oh, and, and, that come on. <laughs> and that it didn't surprise me too much. Oh, oh. <laughs> there it is. No, I, I will say I will I will say the one that did surprise me uh, I think the most was heartfelt. Yeah, I, I think that one really uh, really caught me off guard in, in the way that we talked about how it transitioned from being like a silly, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, here, you know, here's a little bit of a poke at all the puppet advertising and things like that. And it, but then it became this real movie that you know just had so much weight to it. And uh, that one, that one, I think surprised me and, and, and impressed me a lot. Uh, I just thought it was tremendous. That's awesome, Jeremy. One that really surprised me, or just stood out to you, that or stood out to me. Um, Triangle, uh, I think, really stood out to me, uh, just because it was so well done. It was incredibly shot, and it told the story, and it kept me just engaged the whole time. And it, it took its time with its shots, though, too. I think I think Hammer, if you had said that about Triangle or uh, another movie, but yeah, you know, it's like a lot of movies, like okay, we like to move, you know, we like to yeah. keep the energy up. But that one, it would just, you know, it just. It, it, it took the appropriate amount of time. Yeah. I, I think I think the timing fit the the drama very well. Yeah. It didn't linger on a shot, you know, too long where it was inappropriate. It's just everything everything added to you know the emotion. Yeah. And it, yeah, that was that was that was one that was particularly surprising. Charles, bed sheets, yeah. bed sheets. You know, and and I mean. Not knocking them in any way, but they obviously didn't have the biggest production value. You know, they didn't have the best looking equipment, I'm assuming. But just the quirkiness of it, like, because the opening shot, like I said, is of her in a pile of her own vomit. And you're like, oh, it's going to be this really depressing movie about drug abuse or something. Yeah, there's a pile of pills. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh, gosh. And then it turns out to just be this fun little movie about ghosts. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and a relationship between Beetlejuice, like you said and his Wendy or something, I don't know. And I, and I really did like the... Uh, I Cast the, Wendy, uh, not Beetlejuice and Wendy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and I really did like the, the, the record store scene. Yeah. It was just kind of a... It was just a bizarre, funny... Yes. And then just the imagery of the two people in bed sheets sitting on the porch, yeah. holding hands, is just... I think that, that makes for... A, a, Fantastic. And again, smoking, just smoking through the bed sheet. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so how'd you die? Yeah. Trying to light it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fun. Don't you know those will kill you? Yeah. <laughs> it's it it just a really, like I said, a quirky movie. Reminded me of like those, like Juno and that style of indie comedy. I think you yeah. said indie comedy. Yeah. yeah. It was just a fun little movie, and I think. And I think they really hit that, that style, style very well. Yeah. yeah. But, so. Well, that concludes this episode of Love It or If It. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you get a chance, I think we'll try and have a playlist uh, down below of where the 54 playlist as will be. As soon as someone it's uploads the playlist. Will there be a 54 playlist of all the movies on the YouTube channel? There, sh there should be, yeah. Okay, cool. Eventually they'll so hopefully we'll link to that, so you can check out all these films. Jameson, thank you so much for joining us, man. Yeah, that was thank awesome. You. Awesome thank job you. to you and your wife for yes. running an awesome yes. festival this year. Yes. Festival was especially, uh, especially, got to give a shout out to Tippy. Yeah. Because uh, uh, she she wound up in the hospital during the planning of this, uh, not because of it. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> festival almost killed her. But uh, but her dedication was uh, was as such that she was she was uh, like bedridden for like a few days. You know, when I would go to see her, she had like her paper all like <laughs> laid out, and she was writing everything down and calling people yeah. and organizing. So she'd be on the phone, just like it's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, we need this for the 54. We need this for a screening. No, I'm at the hospital. That's why I need you. To do it. And I was like, hey, you can take it. You can take a few days off, but but she didn't. So like, I mean, she. If, if it hadn't been for her, then this would have been like a disastrous lazy because <laughs> <festival. laughs> there's times I was just like not I was like I don't want to do it anymore <laughs> so she pushed it forward so and it was tremendous fun and yeah. it was everything from the inception meeting was fun with the new way to find your genre or not your genre your prop mm -hmm. and stuff with the wheel of death and the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hanger yeah, we tried props to, yeah, stuff. tried to make it like as ridiculously like a carnival as possible. <laughs> yeah. so, it was just a blast. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was tremendous fun. But I'm I'm glad now that we are past it uh, until next year, and uh, and now I can focus on uh, on uh, ripping you guys to shreds on the Tennessee Ten. Yeah, it reminds me. There's a lawnmower over there that the blade isn't working. 
can you go underneath it and check out the yeah, I'll just put my hand under it if, if you want. No, I think you should really look Really, like, get, get your head. In it. Yes. We right. need you to go underneath well, it. I can, yeah. yeah, I can look. Okay. So, but, I mean, I'll have to really get in under there, so someone will have to yes. stand behind. Jeremy's yeah. going to stand by well, Okay. Well, just in case someone actually turns it on. He's, he's going to make sure that doesn't. Yeah, well, let's just go ahead and you know, okay. do it right now. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll do that now. See you later. See y'all. Thank you all very much. For turn the lights off while I look under there too. So next to the blood. Don't mind the blood. That's actually ketchup. It's right there.